Welcome back to our ME1000 video lectures on the ABCDEs of design. Today we will talk about B brainstorming. Our goal is to learn how to get the conditions right so that we can get lightning to strike and illuminate our brilliant new ideas. Last time we talked about assessment. If you'd like an additional example, there's an optional video of myself and Dr. Mascara role-playing an assessment session related to increasing learning in ME1000. For today, we're, t we're focusing on the right portion of this chart, namely how to find means to accomplish objectives and functions with your design. The idea that you and your team are going to design a device for the competition may leave you wondering where to start. One way to approach it is the concept of design space, which refers to all possible solutions to your design problem. The more you learn, the bigger your personal design space is, and the more likely you'll find a great solution. By focusing on sub-problems, you can restrict the region of the design space that you need to search. To understand this concept, consider a new cylinder. It has a three-dimensional design space. You pick its length, its diameter, and the type of material you are going to make it from. Once you choose all three of these, You have a new cylinder. Your task is therefore to search the design space for the best possible solution. Your ability to realize a successful design will depend on a number of different personal skills. So as you go through your college education, you should be picking some of your gen ed courses to enhance your creative communication and teamwork skills. All right, for further illustration of this concept, consider the design space for a device that will convey the user down a hillside. I'd like you to click pause and now give yourself a couple minutes to write down as many different ideas as you can that can accomplish this function. Okay, back. Here are some possible solutions. Cardboard, inner tubes, skis, a kayak, an ice block, a mountain bike, a shovel, a sled, a snowboard, a longboard or regular skateboard, a mono ski, a gigantic golf ball, and even the inside of a tire. All right, how did you do? Did you get some of the crazier ideas like ice block, shovel, gigantic golf ball, or even the inside of a tire? Maybe you got some others such as chairlift, tennis shoes, ATVs, the concept of brainstorming was introduced in 1953 by Alex Osborne. There are four key guidelines that we expect you to know. First, criticism is not allowed. There is no quicker way to put a damper on imagination than to laugh at wild ideas. Since our second guideline is that freewheeling is welcomed, we want an atmosphere where many varied, wild, and unusual ideas are generated. Third, quantity is key. The greater number of ideas, the better your chances that one of them is useful or a great solution. Last, all participants should combine and improve ideas tossed out by everybody to generate new ones. Hmm, what if we put skis on a bike frame? Well look, here's a product that looks like a lot of fun. Okay, once you've generated a bajillion great means to do your functions and be your objectives, you may find it daunting to consider how to combine these means into a single design. When you get to this point, it's time to think of Chinese restaurants. We'll get back to what that means in just a minute. One of the design tools we use at this stage is a morphological chart, or morph chart for short. It's a visual method that helps us find good combinations of our vast quantity of means that we've come up from brainstorming. The morph chart lists our ideas in a matrix with our functions in rows and our possible means in columns. But it's not this kind of matrix. As a quick aside, if the concept of matrix is new to you, it is a collection of rows and columns not unlike your Excel spreadsheets you're learning about in lab. With a matrix, we generally specify the location with the row number followed by the column number. For instance, in this cell here, it's in row 2 and column 3, so we would specify it by 2, 3. Back to morph charts. We use them to help us identify good designs that are logically and physically possible. And to get back to our hungry stomachs, we can think of these like a Chinese menu where we pick a mean from each of the rows to assemble our design. So, you've probably seen this type of menu before. You can pick a drink, soup, type of rice, a side dish, an entree, and a dessert for a fixed price. But did you ever do the math to see how many options you have? 7,500! Yikes! But I bet you, 
bet you can guess that not too many people are going to order, say, a green salad and steamed broccoli, along with soda and the ham fried rice. Do those really go together? Nope. Similarly, you'll find that some combinations of means for your design are uh, illogical. Imagine for a moment that we are using a morph chart to design an airplane Chinese menu style. This would suggest that we have 6,000 choices. Yikes again. But again, you can see that some combinations don't make sense. For instance, you probably can't have passengers stand if you're using rockets for propulsion. And anything powered by springs is like unlikely to be able to hover. There are some important factors to making your morph charts useful. First, you want to have a reasonable size so that you can truly investigate all combinations. Second, you want all the entries to be at a similar level. One of the main reasons the chart on the previous slide seems silly is because it doesn't make sense to combine minor decisions about how to feed passengers with major decisions about propulsion and lift. You want to stick to about the same level of objectives or functions, and you can use lots of morph charts throughout the course of your design. Here's one final example. This follows the optional video I mentioned at the beginning for assessing a problem to increase ME undergraduates' understanding of ki kinematics and dynamics by using interactive demos in ME1000. You can see that we had developed three related functions, demonstrate fundamental concepts, embody mechanisms, and achieve motion. Next, we can make ourselves our matrix by listing means across the top. Then we can go ahead and fill in the results of our brainstorming session. In fact, you can see we have a ton of ideas for achieving motion. One of the really important things to notice here is that you don't need to end up with the same number of means for each, each function. Uh, for instance, in this case, we only identified four fundamental concepts that we wanted to address. Those are in the first row. We just leave all the subsequent boxes for this one blank. We had five ideas for embodying mechanisms, and we ended up with ten for achieving motion. Next, we can start to come up with solutions by picking from each row. For instance, Later in the semester, I'll do one of my favorite lectures about gears. We'll learn a bit more about t equals alpha, i alpha by using gears and a huge, large-scale gear chain that rotates. In class this week, you will practice brainstorming and idea generation on a number of different topics. Make sure you know the four guidelines to brainstorming and have fun. Thank you.